the Bentley Bridge Team is proud to present you Open Bridge Designer 2021 Release 2. For a complete list of the product versions, please, I will direct you to this link in which you will have content related to what's included in Open Bridge Designer 2021 Release 2. Just to start, let's review what we have on OpenBridge Designer on the platform updates. The previous release of OpenBridge Designer was built on Update 16. This release includes both the 16.1 and 16.2 updates. One more time, for a more complete overview of what's new in both of these updates, please refer to the following resources on the MicroStation communities and docs.bentley.com. Well, what's included in OpenBridge Designer 2021 Release 2? We have included the option to merge OpenBridge Designer project files. We understand that the OBDX files are individual files in which each engineer will store its information. But then at the end of the project, we wanted to consolidate it into a single, just to have the entire project in one single OBDX file. Now, this is possible with the option of merge. In the playlist that is part of this presentation as well, please review a more detailed explanation of what this process works and how you can consolidate all into a single file. Also, you may want, as you are designing your bridge, to export the analytical solutions, LibBridge Concrete, LibBridge Steel, or Iron Bridge to maybe an independent review. Like your colleague may want to review it and you don't want to transfer the entire OBDX file, you just want to transfer the leap file, the leap steel file. So now you have the option to export each individual file or export the entire group of analytical calculations to an external source. For OpenBridge Modeler, we got an extensive list of enhancements, uh, which we have divided into primary enhancements and additional enhancements. Okay. So a more detailed explanation and videos regarding each of the primary enhancements are part of the playlist as well. I will just go, on to go over on this. For example, we have include Approaches Labs. So the Approaches Lab, it has now a new element inside OBM called Approaches Lab that includes that the approach, the Sleeper Slab. We have included the Sleeper Slab library with a lot of extensive placement options. These placement options, for example, sync with the deck that is attached to, uh, allows for vertical offsets at the start at the end, horizontal offsets. But it also has certain limitations. We haven't transferred to analytics yet, and there is no modeling of the thickening transition sometimes done along SQ supports. Also, we have uh, added an option on how we extrude be beams, steel beams, uh, now normal to the profiles, on the build-up steel girders, rolled steel beams as well. There are changes in the hunch definition, right? Uh, some corrections that we have done on the splices, and also how we transfer these to leverage steel on RM. For example, in hunches, Right. Now we have a specific uh, flange page uh, and continue the overhangs. Right. So we can extend now, as you can see in the picture, overhangs all following the edge of the deck. Right. We also have thickened the deck on the overhangs too. The hunch width, for example, before it was following the widest one, now it follows the thicken, the, the, the width of each uh, top flange, even when the top flange with barriers along the beam itself. Also, how we cut the beams too. Right? We have two options now. It could be vertical or normal to the profile. Uh, for simple beams, it just works at the very end. For continuous beam, it just do it at the beginning at the end of the beam, not at the intermediate supports. So it's just an option into the properties, in the beam group properties. 
we adjust it as well. So uh, how we place the splices. Now I would say it's more accurate. And also how we represent filler plates on the splices at the top flange and the bottom flange too. As part of the template for abutments, we also have the option now to place corals on abutments. Now, we used to have option before, but not with that much detail that was requested by our users. Uh, for example, now we can apply it, of course, to the abutment itself. It doesn't transfer to an LED yet, but for example, it's tied to the approaches slabs. We follow the shape of the approaches slab. It will have the cross slope before it used to be vertical or horizontal, I'm sorry, but now it follows the cross slope of the approaches slab. Right? So accommodates to that. Also for the uh, I would say easier to work, now we have included a dark theme for the user interface. So doesn't strain your eyes after designing uh, your bridges for a long time. So it's just implemented all across. You just need to activate it, right? And to do that, you just have to go into the back stage and on the settings of look and feel, apply that. But then you have to restart the session to apply it. And then after that, the dark theme will be used across OpenBridge. In this release, we have the option now to run full the full pro, pro structures inside OBM. Before, we didn't have the uh, plans production capability because that was part of the full uh, pro structure license. Now it's included there. Still, remember that you still need a license uh, of pro structure. So it will consume a license for that. But again, it gives you the option not to exit the software, but just run it in, uh, from within. Now, for users, uh, that or organizations that don't do, do don't want to take advantage of that or don't want to use the extra license, so there's options internally that you can activate or deactivate. So certain users can not access that or inadvertently uh, consume a license that they are not supposed to. A series of additional enhancements have been done as well in OpenBridge Modeler. It's a long list of enhancements, as you can see. Uh, we group these into a series of videos that are part of this playlist. So you can just uh, read it, but we're going to demo in this again in a separate video. Just to go through that, um, some easy ones on uh, grout pads and bevel plates, more options into the dialog box when you place uh, bearings. And then now all four corners of that grout patch could be of a different height, right? And it all depends on the cross slope and the profile changes of your bridge. And we report on that, of course. As part of the item types, as you want to retrieve that information, we included the X, Y coordinates and item types of the, of the piles. The play support is by tech and alignment. Remember that we used to calculate when my al the alignment was in a certain offset uh, from the tech. We used to compute that we need a certain horizontal offset and that our calculation was done by hand. Now it's done automatically by the software. Some bearing enhancements, again, explained in another video in more detail, but it gives you the option to extend the, the barrier past the deck at a certain distance, that was a request as well, right? Uh, the same as cutting the edges of the barrier when uh, at the edge of the deck, at the end of the deck. Uh, when we place accessories, now we can place it uh, on top of the barriers because we use the barrier now as an elevation provider. Before, our only elevation provider was the deck and we have to manually calculate that distance. Now, the top of the barrier could be used as such so we can place railings on top of the barriers or certain fixtures like lighting. Now also we can place barrier on barrier. What does it mean? Remember that before uh, we use, we place uh, sometimes sidewalks uh, as barriers, right? As a barrier template. And then when we place a barrier on top of that sidewalk, it was uh, again, as a certain offset following the elevation provider being the deck. Now, as I said, the 
their template itself could be an elevation provider so we can place our sidewalk as a barrier and then the barrier itself it will be on top of that sidewalk and another workaround that our users uh, use was uh, placing the sidewalk as another deck just to avoid that issue but now I think it's easier to do it as a barrier itself it's a barrier template we allow the user to add the structure number as part of the bridge that's uh, part of the part of your records we added pipe piles filled with concrete so it's just another definition on the substructure templates that you may use Right, and these are the pipe piles. Support line offset, right? When our alignment, our bridge was at a certain offset from the alignment, well, we have to make the support line a really long to account for that, right? So now we can put it at a certain offset, not only for graphical purposes, because we can use these support lines, remember, when you are creating your framing plans. So instead of having a very long support line, now we can offset it so our plans will look better and then as well the offset for the support lines we can specify that offset and that will ease uh, the preparation of your plans uh, we use it for plans production not only to place the bridge but as well as to signal our spans internally we reduce the size of the file right? it's internally how we create the solids uh, so there has been improvement for that uh, when you have a lot of information in your bridge, especially when there's steel bridges, so now the file size has been reduced. For your piers and right, uh, abutments, we have the option to place a concrete base pad. Uh, there's a specific material that you can define, and it's also accounted in the quantities. We introduced the CV labeler tool. This labeler tool is the same tool that. Um, Open Roads uses uh, same technology. Uh, it works uh, starting with a text favorite. So there is a more detailed video, and also we're going to do a series of presentations on how to set it up and how you can use it uh, for your plans. It's uh, at this in this release is directed to do 2D plans. Of course, uh, we uh, are going to enhance it to allow you to labeled directly in 3D. Okay. So again, but it's primarily done for civil elements, but the civil labeler, as you will see later, it has options to label microstation elements, reading information from microstation elements, reading item types. But again, this is, will be part of another more detailed presentation or a coffee corner. Along um, a very common request was for us to the cap the top of the cap to be parallel of the deck following the cross slope of the deck to minimize the size of the beam seats for example so now we can do it just an option on elevation constraints that we say parallel to the deck and the abutments and the supports will follow that so that was before now it's after and, in, and it's just a simple toggle inside elevation constraints Show you a real life example here. We add more bearing seats and cheap wall options with its own symbology. It used to be the symbology of the same as the pier. Now we can differentiate that. For enhance the ability to produce your 2D plans, we added new decorators, as we call it. So the decorators are the outlines at uh, Television Zero of the bridge structural elements. So we added for the columns and the peer cap and uh, it shows that automatically it has its own symbology uh, by default it comes in OBM under bar D under bar peer under bar footing so it will ease the production uh, of your 2D plans if you need it uh, and it also works when you create parametric cells or as we call it functional components decorate for the cap too And remember, these are parametric. As you move, update your bridge 3D elements, these decorators will update automatically as well. 
Now, when you do uh, cross frames in steel, we used to have just uh, the specific profiles of uh, steel, but now you can create your own build up shape to accommodate for those specific cross frames that you want to do. Some more customization here. Wing wall is also part of the decorators now, including the piles and the footings that the decorator, that a wing wall may have. We enhance the way to place concrete diaphragms. Before, we just place it from uh, checking connection points at the outer left beam to the outer right beam. Now it goes in key points on every beam, so it's more efficient. That's the, the way to place it. So you can select that options and customize that when you're placing concrete diagrams uh, on your press stress curves. We have done also improvements uh, and we send information onto the eye model and the eye twins as well. We reorganize some of the uh, property panels, uh, easier to read, easier to find the information that you need to transfer. I'll just show you here. Now more properties included, as just let us know what more properties you want us to expose because we know everything about there is the solid, it's just a matter of exposing that to you. For example, the surface area of the deck, we know it, it's even part of the quantities, but we never expose it on the dialog box as you can extract that information maybe through item types, for example. The same as the barriers too. And then the barriers now, it's a separate template name and uh, by template and material. It used to be just the very uh, and the material. Now we can specify also what template was used and the quantity for each one of them. As part of the analytical transfer, we're going to see when we do the presentation on uh, leave, uh, concrete, we can transfer steel cross frames for concrete girls. And they are transferred as load and it could be included on the design. So this is kind of a interoperability enhancement between open bridge modeler and leap bridge concrete. As I mentioned before, this is when you don't want to run or you don't allow your users to run the pro structure license. It's part of a change in the open bridge modeler CFG file. So at the CFG level, you can deactivate that option of inadvertently maybe you're running pro structures and consuming a license. Enhancements on the iModel connector. The peer selection is now available to access all the materials names that have been used. When you place the struts on your supports, on your peers, it has a separate symbology that you can set up as well. Only for rectangular footings, you can offset it now on uh, the center of your column. So we can allow that on a longitudinal and transfer offset from the, as I said, the center of the column. As a tech preview, we have included the option that's in MicroStation that's called associative extraction. So you can extract faces of the solids, but they are associated with the footing itself in our case. So as you update the footing, that extracted shape will also update. So this is part of a MicroStation enhancement, but that's included on the modeling part, as you can see in OpenBridge model. Now when you do reports, again, you know, that's an enhancement in MicroStation. You can do aggregate sums when you are creating tables and reports. Uh, we have included that as part of a technology preview. Some enhancements as the request of Floria DOT, in which now the support name is not only just uh, the component level, but every element of the support, the cap, the piles, and the columns will have the description of the support name included and the material name as well. A minor enhancement on the user interface of our reports is the same functionality. The look is a little bit different. Uh, but the report capabilities are the same. Now, if you need just to export the solids, some people call it dumb solids. I just call it just solids. No intelligence, only the microstation graphics there. There is a key in that you can use to export that your element solids with no intelligence whatsoever. And for whatever purpose you may need it, uh, you can export that. S careful here, cells will not be exported. 
some minor fixes here, enhancements that you will notice as you're working with your bridge, right? Uh, the beam groups, we just call it quite a uh, beer line. Now it's the real support line name that you use, right? And then on another video, we're going to see the enhancements that we have done in Limburg's concrete. So thank you and keep in touch for the next video.